Is it possible to do relative resources in the old model in the same line? Do you have to do this? Rails, G resource, and models? I mean, if, I were to do, if you were to do the student and employee model, would you do in the same line in return model? Yes. If you really wanted to do in the same line, you would drop this. Boop, boop. And then you would write it again. This adds an extra command that will execute. <coughs> Smart. <laughs> There's nothing more for me to teach you. Uh, great. Uh, what should we do now? Should we migrate? Well, let's check the schema first, right? Let's check the migrations first. Boop. Is that okay? I like the way that looks. Yes, smelly breath, Boolean. Is that okay? Are you guys cool with this? Yeah. All right, good deal. So let's Rails DB migrate, right? Breaks the thing of the past. Can you say Boolean spell their values instead of Boolean false? You have like breath smelling, not smelling. No. A Boolean is true, false only. True, false, or nil, sorry. Um, I like where your head's at. Cool. Um, what else? Yes, we should test it, right? So let's do it. Let us test this. Does anyone see right off the bat if we're missing anything? Or will the, or will the, or will the test work? The associations, right? Where do I want to put that? Okay, which one? Cool. And then what goes in student? Toids, interesting. And then, so you can just do model, like MO, and then toid. So like, this is like really good as a search. You don't have to fill out all the words. If you know the path, the file structure, you just like half it. Like, I don't want to say, you, you can get kind of lazy with them. Cool? Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. All right. So what's the relationship here? A. Like this? Hmm. 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 Cool. Let's get out of this. Actually, you can just reload your code. Powerful. I know. You don't have to get out of the console anymore. Just throw a little quick little reload with a bang, and you're in there. All right. So. How do we do this? How do we test this? Great. And what is it? Smelly breath. Actually, we, we need to figure out who this is, right? Cool. Um, does anyone want to go? What's your street name? Your boy. What? Fine. Your boy, right? Smelly breath. True. All right. Does anyone else want to go? I promise I'll give you, I'll, I'll make sure your smelly breath is false. Don't worry. <laughs> Fine. <sighs> Vicky Huang. Oh, Vicky. Smelly breath. Oh, yeah, Vicky, what's your street name? This is not a street name. You can't go walking around like, yo, I'm Vicky from the block. It doesn't. Ooh, all right. All right, little. Fairly Odd Parents throwback? Cool. Yo, Ian, what's your street name? <laughs> you already know? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeasty boy. <laughs> two, sec two second tangent because I have to defend his honor. Um, he makes his own bread. <laughs> right? Every week. And uh, he gets yeast delivered by somebody named Yeasty Boy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, his bread looks incredibly delicious. I can't say for sure because he ate it all. I'm assuming because it's so delicious. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Yeah, Yeasty Boy. Got it. Um, and that, that was a weird tangent. <laughs> what else should I make now? No more, no more students. <laughs> Okay, toy.new, right? Just because we want to see the attributes, that helps. So toy.create with oh, the flavor, right? And what is the flavor for this mint, this toy? Time? <laughs> Spicy time, sure, right? That sounds gross. Ugh. 
All right, is it curious though? Yes. What did I just make? But is this a string? What is this? A it's a boolean. Yes. No. True. All right. Let's find out. Let's check this keyboard real quick. Yep. It's a boolean. Cool. Weird. And then, all right. I'll let you guys pick. Who does this belong to? Yeasty boy. <laughs> if this is done correctly. Then I should be able to check my toy dot first and check to see which student it belongs to. And there it is, easy boy. And then in the same way that if I take my student dot first and I check to see all of my toys, what should I get back? empty array, right? Because there's no associations for this thir first one, but there is with the third. And there it is. Cool. Any questions on just associations? It's like a throwback to mod one. You're past that, right? You're past that. Cool. Smart. Let's start the raw server. It's not as sexy as shotgun. I'm sorry. So great. Now what do we need to do? Which one do you want to build? The student or the toy? I want to build the one with the foreign key. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we'll do. All right. Right to it. Cool. Oh, man. All right. Where do I want to go? Do I want to go to the views? Do I want to go to the controller? Or, or do I want to jump right back into the model? Why the controller? It is the go-between between the model and the views. So to build the views first without the controller, kind of silly, right? So I can simply go app controller toids, and it'll be right there, toids controller. Powerful. Cool. So what is the first thing first? What should I build? Why do I want to build index? Sure, so I could test it out quickly so that I can kind of see something, right? And how do I do that? Do I do def all the toids? I can, right? You want to do that? Let's do that. Cool. So this is going to be, right, so the bootleg index. Cool? Great. Do we have a route or anything for this? How do we fix that? I get to toids, all right, okay. Do I have to do all the toids? This could be anything I want, right? So let's just put, um, I don't know, minty fresh, all right? Get to slash minty fresh will bring me to what? I want to go to the toids controller. But what method? All right. I want to be able to hit all the toys. Cool. What do we want to name this as? Do we want to name it anything for now? Yeah, we'll just leave that for later, right? That's just a helper. We don't really need that part. It's a helper. And we will see how we can use that. So in the toys controller, what do I need from the model? And what is the response? Cool. And what is the response? Render. We can render anything we want, right? But what do we want to call this? Let's keep let's keep one restful thing in here, and let's just keep index. Cool. Great. How do I render index from here? What do I need to build? Cool. So inside my app. Oh man, too many helpers, right? I didn't even like open this. Inside students or toys? Toys should be. Why is it index.erb and not all the toys or minty fresh? Exactly, because in my controller, I'm specifically telling it there's a file called index to render. 
No, you don't. That's a good question. You do not need to do that. Um, if I said there's a file called index.html, then I will have to name this index.html.erb. But here I'm saying there's a file called index, and the extension by default will be erb. Good question. Cool. So let's go. How do I actually build this? What goes in index? Let's start with h1, right? Little, little index action, right? And then? Sure. Toids. What's toids right now? It is Ruby. Um, but what is it? What object? It's an active record collection proxy, but it is an array like object. Cool? So, do with each of these toids, right? T's. Cool? And we want to display T dot. Let's just put flavor for now. Flavor. Cool? And then we'll end. Why is this not highlighting? Right. That's right. Oops. Cool. So, how do I actually show this index? If you remember, what file do I want to check to make sure I can check to see where I'm going in some sort of direction, particularly on a road? Yeah, right? I can check my routes. How would I get to toids all the toids? What route do I want to go to? What can I possibly put in my URL that will bring me here? So if I go to localhost 3000 slash minty fresh, cool. This is very important, right? I'm not trying to single anyone out, so I'm just quick thumbs up, thumbs down. This is like a custom route that shows index. Quick thumbs up, thumbs down. Are you good with this? Okay, good deal. All right, so the restful way, oh, so boring, so boring. Uh, yeah, let's give it. Yeah. Well, it, it does build index, right? But what this builds is going to be a get to slash toids. Yeah, it's just another route, hitting the exact same controller, right? So we'll do this, all right, we'll get rid of this. Go to the toys controller. What do I need to change? To what? Okay. Are we cool? And then if I go to Minty Fresh, what's the error? Right. No route Minty Fresh. Right. Cool. So let's go to index. What is it? All right. Yeah, you guys will do fine. You'll be fine. Cool. That's like the hardest part of Rails, the routes. That's like the hardest part of Rails. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I'm looking forward to pulling you all in the room and just being like, congratulations, you're all in Mach 3. Um, that'll, be, that'll be Thursday. Don't let me down. But it's okay though. I mean, like Rails. I mean, no, 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 it's fine. Rails, Rails can be really confusing, right? And sometimes it just takes a little bit longer to pick up. But there is a formula to Rails, and that's all it is, right? Um, cool. So let's talk about um, inside the index, right? We should make another one. If you hit Command T inside your little bash thing, it'll open up another shell. Say that, and then you can like split it off if you wanted to. No, oh, no, I don't know how to like throw it back. Ugh, it's all right. You can also split it. Split plane horizontally or vertically? Which one do you want? Which one's easier for you all? Vertically? It's all right. Let's just split it. Let's just split it horizontally. Cool. Yeah. And then I'm a CD into Flatiron School. And then I'm a CD into 0219. So that's the difference. So I'm on something called Z Shell, right? ZSH, Z Shell. And it allows me to do that. So, like, you see how 
you have something called intro to SQL. There was a lecture that Alex gave you. I can CD and just put SQL. If I press tab, it'll search through all of them to see if anything matches. It'll find it. With bash, you cannot. With bash, you'll have to do 07 because 07 is the first unique identifier and then press tab. So there are certain benefits to getting into different terminals. Quick side note, that's all. That's how I have that functionality and why some of you may not, that's all. So I can get into the associations lecture by simply typing CD, okay, let me not do that. Um, yeah, uh, I'll put Rails dash A, right, and it'll find it. I, yeah, some of you caught that, uh, that was embarrassing. Great, and then I can go into Minty Fresh. And then here I can go into my console. So I can have my server running. I don't have to ever shut it off. I'm going to have my console running at the same time. So let's make more toys so we can have some more index data. And then I will show you a little bit about link to. And then we'll get into the rest of the lecture. And then in the, in the lecture, I'll, I'll talk about button two. Yeah? So toid.create. Actually, what are the attributes again? Oh, I need to plus this up. You can't see this, right? Cool. All right. So we have toid.new. Toy.create. Let's go to Flavor Town, right? What is this? What is the flavor? Durian. Durian. Wow. Curious? I think we all are, right? And who is this going to be associated with? Me. That is weird. That is a weird one. Cool. Your boy. Anything else? Just a mint flavor. Subway gum? That is gross. I think we all are not curious. Uh, I will also take the hit on this one. That is nasty. Uh, what other kind of mints are we looking at? Peppermint. Pep that's a normal one. Curious false, and we'll give that one to Vicky. That one's pretty normal. Cool. All right. We can just leave this running. Be no big deal. And then if we go back to the index, it should all be there. So what we could do is, I want to talk about link to a little bit. What link to will do, right? Do you remember the arguments for link to? What's the first argument? That's correct. What will display on the page? So the flavor will be there. And then what is the second argument? The path. So I can make this go to a hard coded route. If I refresh, I'm going to open up the inspector so you can kind of like utilize like this bottom frame here. And they'll all go to this hard-coded route, no matter what. Right, this one or this one, they'll all go to hard-coded. Cool. But what else can I do? Toids slash. What would toid slash give me? It would throw me right back to index, right? Do I want do I want from the index to link to index? So where should I where should I go? All right. Toy dot ID. Cool. So if I refresh, if you take a look at this bottom here, I see ooh, toys four. Ooh, toy three. Ooh, two, one. Blast off. Cool. So what this actually will build for you? is it will simply build you what is known as an anchor tag. These are just those A tags that you learned in HTML. If you did not learn this, it's okay. An anchor tag or an A tag is literally what creates a link. All right, so if I were to go here, it should go to the show page, but do I have the show page? So routing error, right? And what's the error? What's the error? No route matches. How can I fix that? My routes, I can do bloop, bloop, a little show action, and then what? What would happen now if I click this? Does the route exist? Does the controller exist? But does the method exist? So I should see something like, wow, how can I fix that? Well, we fixed that, so it's not bootleg anymore, right? Cool. 
index for Relio's little def show action. Do I need anything from the model? What is that? At t, at t money, right? You could do whatever you want, right? Toy dot with the, and where are the params coming from? The params again come from the URL because this is going to be a get to slash toys slash this is going to essentially be the params ID. This is where it's coming from. Cool? Yeah. This is a side question, though, but like, if, um, when I get like URLs, pretty much anywhere, it'll do something that's pretty similar to this formula, but instead of having one or two, it'll be like this random huge string of like numbers and letters. Yeah. Is that like a method of encoding that's coming? Or yeah. Something? That's exactly what it is. Um, what he's talking about is like sometimes if you go to a website, it'd be like uh, you know, search equals to it's like some query, and then it's like this un unknown, ununderstandable thing. Sometimes they will encode and they will change the URL, and they'll call this thing called a URL slug. What that means is here, what we're searching for is by ID four. That's how RESTful routing works. Now. You can imagine that there's another unique identifier that people know about themselves that is not the ID in the database. Can anyone think, don't say it, can anyone think of a unique identifier for you that the government tracks you by? Right. Nope, nope, nope. It's like one, two, three, dash, four, five, dash, Six, seven, eight, nine. Right? You're social. So, what if you want to find a user, right? Like I work for the government. Oftentimes, my employee ID is this very unique nine-digit number. Do I want that to come across on my params in the URL? <laughs> no. So I will encode it, and I will take it, and I will make a URL slug, and I'll be like, great, just because your social security number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, this comes out. Cool? I've like hashified it. Cool. Yeah? I think uh, also uh, the wise and magnificent yeasty boy back there kind of touched up on it when he was doing the wrestle routing sushi lecture. So, oh, no. Ian's so smart. Cool. <laughs> Great. Bloop. Right? Great. Uh, then what do I do here? What is next? What is the response? What's the response? That was kind of weak. Okay. A little render, render show action. Nice. So do I have a show page? ERB, and this is going to be the show page. No details. There it is. Wow. Wowzers. Cool. Don't worry about details, not important. Like, you can make your own show page. Cool. So, let's actually get to some juicy bits. And that is. Yeah? No, no, no. You're not normal. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is, again, um, the question is, like, can you put index and show when you render in quotes instead of the symbol, right? Yeah, this will work as well, like if I were to save it and refresh, just to make sure I'll go back to toids, and then I'll link directly to it. Um, similar to what I mentioned earlier with, like, the lookup speed in terms of, like, the string as a data structure and a symbol as a data structure, it is just a hair more efficient as it data structure. Um, but render, and some of you probably know this, render is a method and it will take an argument and it needs to know what to actually show. So this is just syntactical sugar. You could do this with any method. If it has arguments, you don't actually have to put the parentheses. You can just put a space and then give it the argument. Cool. In the same way, this leads perfectly into this. I was going to go into it later. Link to takes in many arguments, but they're just space separated. Cool? This, this is the exact same thing. It's just all syntactical sugar. 
In JavaScript, you can they get away with this. Cool. I have a friend who's Scottish. It just means cannot. So you cannot get away with this. <laughs> we talk about really dumb things. Um, cool. Yeah. You can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can they. So yeah. All right. You know, it's not important. Ready? Let's go. So. Cool. Yeah? Eat? All right. Let's get this form. All right, what's this method here? What do I need? Def create. Jump in ahead, huh? Well, new action. Why new? What is new? Two. Get to slash new. Slash toid slash new. If you forget this slash, all right, it will change your URL. So get into the habit of saying like get to slash toids slash new or get to slash toids. Yeah. If you just start saying that, you will not forget it when you write it. That's just the only reason. Cool. So model and response. What do we need anything from the model? Yeah. If I'm building a form four, I will need a model. All right, so here I can do a little, little toy action. Boop, boop. Equals to what? Cool. And what is the response? Render. New. Cool. So you're right, I need to make a new. New file. It's convenient. Cool. New toyed. Powerful. Do we have a mint here? Oh, wow, there it is. That's the one. That didn't. That doesn't look like the emoji, but we'll live. Uh, great. How do I do this form? Should I use a HTML form? Trash. Should I use a tag? Okay. All right. Tag would work. Tag would totally work. But we have the object, and uh, we can take advantage of the complexities that Form 4 will build for us. So I pass in the object, which is going to be the, right, the toy.new. Oh, I was like, I was like, what do you guys say? And I realized I, I am the crazy one. So let's do, um, we need a Boolean, right? So let's put a checkbox here. Checkbox or checkbox field? Cool. All right, and that's going to be for smelly. Uh, oh no. Uh, sure, curious. All right, very good. And what is this? Flavor. Oh, forgot that. And I definitely don't want to embarrass myself. That submit. Is there anything else we need? What else we need? Okay, number field. And that's going to be for the student ID, right? Cool. So I can do toids new. Hmm. 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 That's weird. Why is this ID equals to new? What is this? Let's take the route. I do not have the new route. So it's interpolating new as what? ID. Do you remember that exact same error in Sinatra? It's back. Which is why we were like, you should probably learn Sinatra first, right? Because some of these things are so weird to explain without having seen it first in another framework. Cool. So a little new action. Cool. Yeah. So what this is doing, again, is doing a get to slash toids, right? To the toids controller at a method of new. All right. So toids slash new. And then this is doing toy slash show, pointing to toy show. Th this is wrong. Does anyone catch? Did anyone catch that? Okay. Yeah. Test tested you. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. If I move this, right, I get I should get the same error unless they fixed it in Rails five. Huh? They fixed it. 
They fix it, yeah. It, you actually have to like do the exact same nonsense in Rails, right? But oh, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. Get rid of this. Oh wait, hold on. Ha! Ha ha! Come on, Rails. Rails. All right. Does anyone understand this bug now? Except when you do the magic, oh, that's not going to work. All right. It will actually make sure they're defined in the correct order. Is everyone cool with this? If you hold, if you like highlight something and you hit command, control, up and down, you can just move it around. And you just send it to oblivion, right? <laughs> cool. Um, that's. Correct, yeah, then you should come first. Great. Any questions on that route? Because it reads top to bottom, right? So, fix that. Oh, man. Oh, trash. Look at this. Gross. We probably want some labels, all right? A little label action. F dot label for curious. Uh, we want that to show, though, right? Embarrassing. Look up. Oops. Oops. Cool. And then finally, oop. And this is going to be for the student ID. And this is going to be for the flower. Nice. Cool. Same problem we ran into in Sinatra, right? Like, are our users going to know? who the ID is in the database? No. So what did we do last time? What did we do with Sinatra? What was the cool fix that we used? Great. So does Rails have some sort of drop down in my form? I don't know. How to have a drop down, the select field in a Rails form? Number one. <laughs> From 2013, still the number one choice. I'm creating Scaffold, your dirtbag. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Scaffold's fine. There's uses for it, and we will go into that. If, if I wind up being your Mod3 instructor, I will personally do it. But whoever is in Mod3 will teach you like why Scaffold's important. So I hope you know when I say like trash or garbage, I'm joking. Do not take this seriously. I am a complete joke, right? Like, don't just, all right. Don't take when I say things like that seriously. Except this, right? <laughs> Look at the Rails. <laughs> Look at the Rails documentation, right? F dot collection select. Let's take a look at the documentation. <laughs> collection select. Wow, it returns a select and option tag. Basically, it builds this for you. Bless up to Rails, Lord Rails, D H H. Plus plus. Right. <sighs> this is how to do it. I have to have some sort of belongs to, has many. Cool? I'm not really concerned about what this is right now. I'll figure it out. But it looks like there's some sort of collection select. And it takes in, oh man, a lot of arguments. Right? But don't worry. I'm gonna explain what each one is and you all be wizards at this. So collection select. Cool. There seems to be some sort of difference between collection select. And what I just read, and that was f dot collection select. So I will simply explain to you the difference because it was very difficult to actually find. So I will tell you. If you use collection select, all right? So you have f dot collection select. And then there's like a million arguments here, right? If you use the f block, if you remember it's calling in this form from the form builder. So on a collection select, it will assume the first argument is going to be for this object. Here's what I mean by that, because that doesn't sound like it makes sense. I wanted you to hear it. Let me explain, and I'm going to say it again. So collection select takes in the first argument is going to be a post. The second argument is something like author ID. We can kind of elaborate 
what you see in here as to what it builds. I'm gonna point out and show you what it's building for you, and then we will do it together so we can see with our own code. If you have a post here, it's going to create the nested object. This is what it's doing. All right. So here we have toids. So the nested object will be toid. All right. Author ID is going to be the key that comes across on the params. And then a combination of these two are going to build this identifier for the select. This is going to be important as we get into CSS and JavaScript. But for right now, this is sort of kind of useless to you. The next thing is, if you have prompt true, it will build this, which is please select. This is a prompt. It has no real value. This is a prompt. So I will build this with prompt true and then without it, and you'll see. Author.all is going to be all the authors I'm going to iterate through. So this is going to be like author.all each do build a option tag. It's going to put inside as values an ID. The ID is going to be called on each of these authors. So author.each do the value is going to be author.id. And then this right here, the names are going to be author.a method. So name with initial, if we go back, I glazed over it, it just defines it. It's just a method that returns a string because this is what is going to get displayed. So one more time, this is what the form is for. The first object builds the nested hash. The second is going to be the key in the params. The third is everything you want to build a select tag for, you're going to iterate through. Dot ID is going to be the value. You can call a method on each of these authors, and that is what is going to come out here. So let's take this, write in our own code, and make sense of it. Cool? So I'm just going to rip this, like a, like a good developer, I'm going to do this. Ready? Copy code that I don't fully understand, and I'm just going to go bloop. Oh, that, all right, let's do this. Bloop. Okay, that didn't work. I have to fix my... No, I have to fix my full screen shortcut. Huh? That's what I get for copying code. Embarrassing. Cool. So, uh, all right, cool. Just so you can see it, right? Oh, I have a text wrap here. Either way, so the idea here is that, remember, f.collectionSelect versus collection select. The first argument is going to be toyed. So let's mirror it exactly. Do I need to put in toyed here? Who says yes? Who says no? It's no because f dot, the first argument is toyed. So what we could do is let's do a one for one. And let's pass in the toyed. And see we have post here. The second argument is going to be author ID. Let's match up and just take a look and see what that relationship looks like. Post and author. Post belongs to author, author has many posts. What is our relationship here? Toyd belongs to author. Toyd belongs to students, sorry. <laughs> and the student has many toids. So remember, toyd is post, right? In this one for one. So we have post, toyd. Author is literally the other model. So what is our other model? Cool. What do we want to iterate through and have a selection for? So far, so good. Yeah? And what is this ID? It's going to be calling ID 
on student each and every time. And then name with initial, what is this? It's what gets displayed as a method. So what is a method on student that we want to display? Street name. Remember, these are all methods because Active Record builds the adder accessor. So these are, in fact, just methods. This is the reader method for street name. And then I told you I will just follow it like a monkey and say pumped true. Cool? Let me get rid of this. Bloop, go! And see what happens. Bloop. <sighs> Powerful. Let's take a look at and inspect it. I have the select tag, and I have exactly what I think, right? The select name. The toyed is the nested hash, which lines up with toyed flavor, which lines up with toyed curious. So I can have params at a key of toyed will give me curious, flavor, and student ID. Yeah? Probably not important, but on the value, the first one, option value, doesn't have to have the um, HTML will just assume that this is empty. Yeah. Cool. So let's do the first thing, and that is let's get rid of prompt true. Go and see what happens. Huh. It just starts immediately. There is no police select. There's no prompt for this drop down. So far, so yeah, I like this head nods. Yeah, mm, yeah. Prompt, you want the prompt? Yes or no? Prompt, yes? Prompt, no. Okay, prompt, yes. It's just a better user experience. Right? So let's do that. Let's bring it back. Cool. I mean, you could set prompt to false or you could just delete it. It's your call. Oh, just kidding. We want that. Nice user experience. So we have street name here, right? Interesting. What other attribute can we call on student? Smelly breath? Sure. Smelly breath. Right? And what is this argument right here? It's a Boolean, but this argument is the method that it's going to call on each of the students and what it's going to build as what displays. So I should see what in these drop downs on refresh. True, true, false, something like that, right? True, false, false, sorry. Cool. Now, if I were to put a method that does not exist for a student, right? Like goodest boyo, right? I like dogs. I make a lot of weird dog references. What should I see as an error? Undefined method, goodest boyo for student. Did that error make sense? Yeah? Hmm. 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 <laughs> cool. It's because it's calling this method on each of the students. It is literally doing this, right? You have a select tag, and then you want to end the select. Cool. Give me one second, I see you, and I'll follow up. All right, and then it's doing student.all. This is what it's doing. All right, dot each do. Bloop, bloop. Bloop. All right, student. And then this is what it's doing. It's building an option tag. And here it's calling this method. Whatever passed in. So what do we have here? Smelly breath. Oh, what was the proper thing? Street name, something like that. So here it's going to call student.street name as what comes up to display on the screen. So far, so good. Inside the value, it's going to call another method. So let's also put street name and see what comes up. Hmm. Oops. Oh, this is the other one I'm building, like the nonsense one on the bottom, right? So look what happens. Your boy, Vicky, and Yeasty Boy. That's what comes up as the values. So here in the value, it's doing student dot whatever this method is. The argument right after the all. So student dot ID. So value and then what displays value and what displays. 
Clash of Psychics is like pretty tricky, right? So far, thumbs up, thumbs down, like Gladiator, like I'm not really sure what you're saying right now. Is that up or? It's like 80%. Okay. So, that's okay. And then here in the select, remember this is what we described as having the key come across as the params, the attribute name, yes? So it's going to take this toy, and it's going to go bloop. And then it's going to go, oh, student ID. Got it. Roger that. And this is what it's doing. That's all it's doing. Are there any questions on how it's building the dropdown with these five arguments? Six, really. Does anyone know what this first argument does? Right? It just builds the nested hash for it. What about the second argument? What does it do? All right, it puts it as the key for your params, the nested hash. What is this third argument? What it's going to iterate through and build how many options? Sorry, some of you are perfectionists, Rubyists. Cool. Uh, that probably needs a little bit of this action. Oh, damn. Wait. I'm sorry. So it's calling this method right here. And then here. Bloop. So I should see two of the exact same things. Well, I, I don't have the prompt true on, on this one. Right. Yeah. So I mentioned See, like this so is exactly. Correct. I'll I'll explain here in a second. Um, cool. Does anyone see how these are basically exactly the same? Are there any questions on collection select or how it's working? But more importantly, the most important thing of just the last like 20 something minutes, if you had to do a drop down, could you do it? I mean, not perfectly, but you would see collection select, see five or six arguments and go, I'll figure this out. Rather than, dang, that's a lot of arguments. I have no idea what's happening. And get scared, just basically avoid it. Right? Like, you could kind of figure it out now. All right, just to see and pull in those method calls. Cool. So I'm going to get rid of this. Oop. And then, as I said, f dot tells me the, all, the first argument is automatically going to be this. So this should still work. Yeah? Cool. So any questions on this f dot and not f dot, just collection select in general, what it's doing for you, why would you use collection select? The user doesn't know what the collection Yes, for this specific use case, a user doesn't really know kind of like what the ID is in the database, but collection select in general would be used for creating a drop down. Oh, I thought you had another question. All right, cool. Yeah? So let's let's make one, right? Is this what's the flavor here? Win I'm on. Cool. All right, curious. You guys remember this? From Apple Jacks? It was like this giant cinnamon stick that was like very clearly like a fake Jamaican. It was like cinnamon is the win I'm on. And I'm like, all right. Uh Easty Boy, right? So like look. What happens? What happens now? What will happen when I submit this form? Where will it go? Where do you think it'll go? Let's just figure this out, huh? It will go where? It'll do what? HTTP verb. Which one? Post. Yes. And then to what route? What route over here? 
slash toids. Cool. Smart. Do I have a post to slash toids in my routes? No. How do I build that? All right. It's going to go to what controller? <coughs> toids. Sure. And then do what method? Create that toid, right? It's going to go to create. Or I can do this. Yeah? Is everyone comfortable with this resources and what it builds for you? OK. Serious question. If I told you on your code challenge you cannot, you can they use resources, who feels any different? You should be like, look, I know the rest of the routes. I got you, fam. No big deal. Please let me use resources. I know what it does. Who feels? You have a question or just? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. The only thing that's annoying to me is the add alias. Okay. That's one that Rails was using to make the path to the Rails app. Like, it was like, oh, right. Rails will build in the as um, certain helpers that like Form 4 will use. Um, and some of the other like builders will use. So resources can help you, but if you know what the as should be, you should be okay. So if you can do like as toy path, like you have to write out toy path and know your resources. Um, mm, all right, this is what we'll do. I will wrap up. Actually, let's check. What's, where's, where's K at? Good old K. Cool, case free. So what we'll do is this. I will finish this lecture, and then if you want, I'll have an optional breakout. We'll go into K, so I can give Mike Chang the room. Or should I just tell Mike to go there? I'll just tell Mike to go over there. Um, yeah, Mike Chang's amazing and flexible. <laughs> why, was that, why was that funny? <laughs> uh, this is a flexible guy, right? Um, I, I will I will kill the recording after we finish and I'll go into like optional breakout. You do not have to stay, but I will break down like the as and the route helpers. Cool. All right. So create, right? What controller action does this point to? Is there yes. What controller action does this point to? Toy's controller at an action of so we need to do, do we have a create action? Thank you. What do we need from the model? And what do we need from, and what do we send as a response? What do we need from the model? Do we need anything from the database? No, but we'll probably need to interact with the model because we're going to create something in the database. So toy.new, passing in the params at a key of ID. What is what is params at a key of ID here? Well, let's find out. Oops. So that means that. Sorry, now my calendar's on the recording. It's fine. Curious flavor sin. Naman. All right. Now I'll just give it to old yeasty boy over there. Create toid. That should hit what? It's more. And then I can do where the params. And I see, let's just zoom this out a little bit. Toid, curious, flavor, student ID. So can I do toid, I'm sorry, params at a key of toid? Yes? What does that give me? Are these the parameters that I want? Let's check. Are these the parameters that I want? OK. Can I currently save it into the database? <laughs> no. no. What do I need? I need to whitelist the attributes right? in that programming paradigm we discussed last time called strong primes. So um, because there was a completely separate lecture on it, I'm just going to fly through this. All right. A little strong params action. Just kidding. This is going to be the toy params. And it's going to be the params. And I'm going to require, why am I requiring and not doing this? 
Can anyone remember? All right, well, let's take a look. I'll show you. So I have params at a key of toid. Can I do something like, what is params at a key of toid? Do I want to ever overwrite my params? So if I did instead params dot require at a key of toid, I cannot can a oops. Anyways, the problem is I, I can a overwrite it. I'm just requiring. I'm only asking read only. Cool? And this is because there are potentially, as I've been told, bad people on the internet, right? And you want to be able to permit those params. So what params do we want to permit for Toy? Flavor. Curious. And then the, cool. Uh, let's just, form, God bless you. Form, God bless you. Cool. Let's just space that out a little bit. Yeah. Like this? I don't actually know what that does. I don't. Is that that exists? That's real. Permits everything. Huh. Do we want that? Do you want to permit all the params into your database all the time? I would say never. I would say never. Um, I've been told that the internet is scary, right? There are bad people, all right? So please specifically whitelist your attributes. Cool? You never want to permit everything. Never. Never, 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 never. Cool? Um, it's hard to fully understand but just simply the idea that if I permit everything, the idea is that somebody else can hard code certain attributes and they can overwrite certain things. Like, so for example, instead of require and I put params at a key of told, there's a way that I can go inside, right, reset the params and then have the params inject in my database. That didn't make any sense. Um, it's like a lot of cybersecurity stuff. The idea is do not allow any and all attributes to your database. Specify them. Cool. We could talk about this afterwards. I'm like running out of, out of like time for lecture. Cool. All right. Sweet. Let's exit out of here. And so what we need to do is we need to create using this powerful params that we just made. Yeah? And what is the response? Redirect to the toids. Some of you are like, oh, okay, that'll work. You guys don't like strings, huh? Think it's dirty. You want to use that helper, don't you? Okay, what's the helper? Okay, so huh? this is going to be the index, right? Because it's the toids path with the S. Uh, I will go into this in the breakout, but I just want to be able to create this real quick. Cool? So, yeah, that's fine. Now let's go back to our toids new. Let's actually make one. Curious. Mint? Man. Fine, we'll give that to give it to Vicky. Vicky, you like mint? Oh, okay, great. We're good. Great toy. And now we see mint here. And boom, links right to the show page. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions on like this association though? And how we can actually verify 
that the toy is associated with the student. Well, let's do this. All right, super fast. I'm going to go into my students. Students controller. And I'm going to do uh, a show page. Cool. Oops, that didn't work out. All right. And I'm going to grab my student equals to student.find with the params, key of ID. Where does that come from again? All right, the route, right? Cool. And I'm just going to render the show. Inside my students, I have a show. And what I have here is, all right, student details. So like H1 student deets, all right? And all it is is a P tag with student dot, oops, what is it? Like street name? I forget. And then we have a P tag that says, these are my mints. Cool. Do I have access to the mint here? Do I need to do something like at mint? Who says yes? Who says no? Well, let's dive in. Whoop, let's dive in. Do I have access to the mint object? Whoop. Oops, sorry. All right, minty, minty object, cool, oops, and then I can go, all right, look like a ruby, minty object, dot, where does the, where does the minty object right here? This is the instance, right? And so I want to call the flavor, flavor, let's go to flavor town. So if I were to go to say, student slash, Two. Let's go to Vicky. Boom. Peppermint and mint. Wow, really like those mints. Yeah. All right, cool. If I wanted to, I don't know, link to this. I know, now we're getting fancy. This is what shows up on the page. So what is the next thing we should put here? Here's where the helpers will bite you in the butt. Where do we go? Do we go to the student's path, or do we go to the mint path, or the toy's path? All right, it should be the toy's path because it's gonna be for this particular toy. So, I can do the, what? Toy path, and do I pass in the student object? Who thinks it's the student object? Okay, who thinks it's the minty object? Who thinks I'm trying to trick you? <laughs> Old Mike Chang, right? This should be, in fact, the minty object. Because what will this build for you? This is what it builds for you, right? Does this route look like it should make sense? Right, versus like the helper where you're kind of like, well, which one do I want to use? Kind of not really sure. If you know what it should be, then the helper becomes clear, but you'd have to know what this is. So now that we've built this out, I see you. Let's just click through everything, see that powerful functionality, and then I'll get to your question. Yeah? So I have students too, refresh action. I can see the mint, I can click on it, boom the show page for the mint, right? I mean, it'll work though, because like, it's like mint four, which is correct. And this one, which is mint five, which is also correct. Uh, I should have built the show page, I feel stupid. Yes. Yeah. Can you just write minty object? Yes. This right here, if you just pass the object, because what is the second argument for link to? The route, right? If you pass in just the object, and Rails is like, what's the route? And you pass it in just the object, in the way that it sounds in English, Rails has a built-in, under the hood, magic, 
and it says, great, what's the route? Well, the route's going to be for this object, this particular object. So Rails would be like, okay, great, it must be trying to get the show page for this object. So it has nothing to do with like, the shortcut thing. If I don't have the shortcut as... Uh, if you don't have the as helper, no. This, okay. this will still work. It will still work. Yeah. Yeah. I will tell you, uh, I use this. If you do not fully understand it, one, understand it, ask questions. Two, do not use it if you do not understand because it will, it will be very confusing to debug and it's just kind of tricky. This is literally the exact same thing as passing in minty object this or this. It'll interpolate the ID either way. This is the same thing. Just this? Okay. Uh, no, this will do something else. But the idea is I just want to leave this here. And if there's no other questions on this associated object, we will break. I'm going to talk to Mike so we keep the room and He'll go to K, and then we'll do this like breakout routes lecture. Is that cool? Are there any other questions on associations or associate objects? Or this F dot collection select, each one of the arguments for it, what it does, where in the docs you can reference it, and how you can like read the doc and make it your own. Cool, that's all I have for you.